Hello English learners and welcome back to another video. This is Level Up English and my name is Michael and I am in central London today by a very noisy road. I can see just over here we've got the Tower of London across the road and I'm going to be taking a walk today around the old London Wall. So this is a really impressive part that remains behind me. It was built in around I think 200 AD according to that sign, that plaque I read just a second ago. Uh, but this is a Roman defensive wall and you can actually walk around where this wall, or well, the remains of the wall today. So that's what I thought I would do today. I'm going to walk around the remains of the Roman wall. It's about 2,000 years old and maybe along the way you can learn a bit about London, also learn some expressions related to walls and all that kind of stuff just to throw in there for fun. And yeah, it's really cool as well because you can see we've got this like 2,000 year old wall of London built by the Romans and then in the background the tallest building in the city, the Shard, and it's kind of modern architecture versus old I suppose, but I don't know, I like that contrast anyway. Okay, so here we've got a really impressive part of the wall here that's kind of overlooking a hotel or some kind of building here, it's kind of built into it almost. But it's really cool here because you can still see the, like the windows up here. You've got these like little holes where they used to have like wooden supports in there. And according to the plaque on this one, apparently the bottom four meters was like the original Roman war, which was like you know, 1,800 years old. And then like the top half was kind of the rebuilt section from the medieval times. So it's still very old, but not quite as old as that one. And you know what, sometimes I feel like talking to you guys is like talking to a brick wall. Talking to a brick wall. So here's a good expression for you. If you feel like you're talking to a brick wall, it's kind of like you are talking but they're not really listening. You're talking but they're not really giving you any response. And it, you, you might as well be talking to a brick wall like this one behind me. So you know, whenever you want to tell someone something in the future and they're just not listening to you, this might be a good one to use. So if you do come to London, I do recommend taking this walk for yourself. I mean, to be completely honest, this is the first time I'm doing it and I'm doing it on camera with you guys. So hopefully that's kind of exciting. But yeah, I think a lot of the walk uh, will be not so interesting, perhaps. Like there won't be much of the wall on a lot of it because a lot of the wall has been demolished for various reasons. Um, some of it has just been kind of covered up by other buildings. So you won't see it everywhere. But hopefully I've kind of got a map which I can maybe link in the description that wasn't made by me but in this map you can kind of see the different remaining or surviving parts of the wall. So we're going to the next one now. So here's a map of where we're going today. So down here, the red one, that's the Tower of London. And you can see the wall goes all the way around there and back down to the River Thames again. So I might be missing some things, you know, because I, as I said, it's the first time I've done this walk, but I'm kind of walking along where the wall used to be right now. So yeah, as I said, it's not really here anymore. It's not on this part. I know this has all been kind of built over and modernized, but you can see kind of based on the, the brickwork on the floor, it kind of shows the pattern of where it used to be. So I'll show you that now and it's kind of cool to see. You can follow it. It's a lot easier to follow on this part anyway. This is kind of marked where the wall used to be. And, and then we've got a road. I think one good reason to do this walk is it just gives you a sense of the scale and the size of the city you know, 2,000 years ago. So we think of London today as this huge, big metropolis, this big city. But you know, back in the day, it was actually quite a small place. I mean, I guess it's big for the time. It was considered big back then. But by today's standards, it was a very small town, really. And the walk in total, I think it's just 2.8 kilometers to walk all the way around. So I'm going to try my best to do it today because you know, it's not so far and that really gives you a sense of how small the city was back then. See the good thing about this map that I'm following which I will put in the description is it kind of shows all the plaques, locations of the plaques. So you can follow these plaques, plaque is a sign like this and you know, we've got a picture here of what it might have looked like in the past. So see here you've got the city wall here and then just beyond the wall we've got fields and sheep. So I'm continuing the walk now, of course, I'm plodding on. So another good expression we could learn at this point is to come up against a brick wall. Another one with wall. 
So to come up against a brick wall is to kind of have an obstacle or something blocking your journey. It's like something you cannot overcome or you know, get past, like a hurdle in your life, basically. So I have come up against a brick wall. For example, I was you know, trying to edit this video and I lost the footage, so I could no longer make my video and I didn't know what to do, so I came up against a brick wall. Fortunately, that's not true, fingers crossed, but there's a good example anyway. So maybe you can let me know in the comments when you have come up against a brick wall and there's been some kind of problem or obstacle which is stopping you from progressing in some way. Another ex expression that we could learn, which I think is not something you might see in a textbook. However, it's really, really common and people say this all the time. And I'm going to say the nice version because there's like a rude version and a more polite version. And this is, I am bricking it. I'm bricking it. I'm giving you this one today because, you know, bricks are a part of walls, I guess. You know, it's loosely related, I guess you could say. But if you are bricking it, that means you're really, really scared. So for example, I'm, you know, filming in public. Everyone's looking at me. I am bricking it. I'm really nervous. And the meaning behind this one, if you wanted to, you could say the S word, which is a swear word. I'm not going to say it in this video, you know, family friendly video, you know, but if you want to say the more polite version, you can say bricking it, which just means you're so scared. You are, let's put it politely. Let's say going toilet in your pants. That's what we're saying here. So let me know in the comments a time when you were bricking it, when you were so scared that you might have had a big accident. <laughs> so the area behind me now, this is Moorgate, which is another section of the old wall of London. And this was one of the main gates on the north side of this defensive wall. And again, as you can see, there's not much left of it now. In fact, there's really nothing left as far as I can tell. But I still think it's kind of cool to imagine, like to come here and see like how big and how different the city is today and imagine what it might have been like almost two millennia ago, almost 2000 years ago. Like how this, like now it's a busy junction, but you know, in the past it was the gate where people used to cross from the north of England down into the city. So despite the noise of the construction work going on all around, I found quite a nice garden here, quite a nice park with a beautiful example of the original wall. Well, kind of the original wall. You can actually see, this one's very interesting because you can actually see the layers here. So that the ones at the bottom would be the oldest ones that have had the least repairs. And then as you go up, you can see like the more newer versions from the medieval time. So I imagine here, for example, you've got the kind of more loose, uh, spiky rocks at the bottom. These are the older ones. I'm only guessing, but that's what the kind of the sign said as well. And then further up, you've got a little bit more of an organized wall, which I guess is the part that was rebuilt a few centuries later. And do you know one thing that really drives me up the wall? I'm saying this one because it just happened a minute ago, and this is people who do not get out of your way on the street. So maybe there's a group of like three or four people, they're walking towards you and they're not letting you have any room on the path. So either you have to walk into them or stand on the road or walk on the road to get around them. And that's one thing that honestly does drive me up the wall a little bit. It is very annoying and it happens quite a lot in London. So that drives me up the wall, but not this wall, not this one. So as you can see behind me now, we have reached the Museum of London, which marks the end of the wall. So it doesn't go all the way to the Thames. I imagine that's just because there isn't enough of the ruins or the remaining wall there's not really anything of interest to see there so basically this walk goes from the tower of london to the museum of london and we have just reached the end and here right at the end we have kind of the last remaining large part of the wall that has been left one thing i find really fascinating as well so particularly in this area right at the end of the wall of the wall walk anyway a lot of the ruins that you can see behind me here, these were undiscovered. They weren't really known about before World War II. They had kind of you know, been hidden up by other buildings. They were forgotten about. And then during the German bombings in World War II, it kind of uncovered a lot of these old Roman ruins. So even though it was a terrible thing that the city was bombed, 
it is kind of interesting how out of that bombing we did have all these ruins that were rediscovered because of that. Another really interesting fact with this final section of the wall is, as some of you may know, in the year 1666, almost 400 years ago, we had a big fire. It was called the Great Fire of London. And although the city was much smaller back then, a large part of the city burnt down. And you know, this was partly because a lot of the buildings back then were, of course, made of wood. So everything was very flammable. The fire spread very quickly and there wasn't much to stop the spread of the fire. But one thing that did stop it, however, was the, the old wall of London. So this ancient wall that was you know, hidden between all these buildings here, because it is made of stone, of course, it's made of brick, it stopped the fire from spreading and causing any further damage, at least in this area. So it's kind of an interesting fact as well that maybe some houses were saved at the time because of the wall. Now, I do highly recommend you take this walk because it will end you up around this area here. So as you can see behind me, you've got St. Paul's Cathedral, very, very famous landmark and tourist attraction in London so if you that's also on your list you can check that out as well but maybe before we go I can leave you with one final expression which is a really common saying and it's always used alone in a sentence and this is Rome wasn't built in a day I thought this one was kind of appropriate because we're looking at the Roman wall of London today but if you say that Rome wasn't built in a day you're kind of saying that important things need time if you're working on a really important project or something that you think is going to be really special then it's going to take time and it's not going to happen in a day so next time your boss is asking you hey where's that project i've been waiting for weeks on that project you can say to him wait rome wasn't built in a day so yeah thank you very much for watching i have now arrived at blackfriars station which is a very central station in london which is perfectly kind of aligned with the end of the walk today and you know, really good if you want to get home or get back to your hotel or wherever you're staying. So yeah, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye for now.